hello once again, my fellow Star Trek fans, my fellow modelers, and my fellow lovers of everything interesting. I hope your autumn is going wonderfully. Believe it or not, we're into November now. And when we think of November, we think of Thanksgiving. And November and Thanksgiving, the season here in New England, we think of the Mayflower. And I want to show you a little model kit, vintage model kit from Adar that I picked up to show you guys. Now, this was supposed to be my Thanksgiving build, but I ended up getting a much better Thanksgiving build for you guys, and I'm going to be doing that video shortly. But this one is a kit of the Mayflower from Adar. And check out the beautiful illustration on the box. And this is Adar ship in a bottle. I love these Adar model kits in the bottle. I've shown you guys the spirit in the bottle. And I've shown you guys the Jaws super scenes. Where they've got the Jaws shark in the bottle. And now we'll show you the Mayflower in a bottle. And again, this is going to be a really fun build, but the one that I got to replace this is just really cool. And it's authentic, so stay tuned for that. Adar, Mayflower ship in a bottle, Adar Products Corp, Brooklyn, New York. Let me show you guys the end of the box. Let's see, this is model number 206-300. And I think both of the ends would be the same. Yep. And looking at the other side of the box, you can see the complete series of the ships in the bottle. So we've got the Flying Cloud. The Chase, W. Morgan, the Savannah, the Santa Maria, the Mayflower, which is what I got right now, the Revenue Cutter, the Constitution, and the Bon Ham Richard. So these are some beautiful ships, and these models are just fantastic, and there's nothing on the back. So I think what we're going to do now is we'll take it over to the desk where there's a more light and more room and I'll be able to show you guys this awesome model kit of our Mayflower. Okay, so you can see there's better light over here and we've got the beautiful Mayflower. Let's go ahead and open up the model kit for you guys. And we got a couple of bags Actually, let's start. I'm going to start with the instruction sheet. Maybe we can do this as a Thanksgiving build next year. You can see this is from Adar Products Corporation. Instructions for assembling the Mayflower ship in a bottle. Read your instructions carefully. I was hoping we'd give a little bit of history on the Mayflower, but it didn't. Um, it shows you to be careful, painting, assembly instructions, and tips. We go to figure one, and you can see the ship, how it's gonna come. They give you the surface of the water that's gonna go with the bottom of the bottle, and that's the ocean base, and we got the right half of the hull and the left half, and we got the deck. So this is not really gonna be a hard model kit to do. I think the majority of the work for this kit would come in the, uh, the form of the detailing. You can see figure two. Cement mizzen mass five, main mass six, and four mass seven to the deck. Cut the rat lines in clear film. Carefully cut out and trim to fit the cement rat and cement the rat lines eight, nine, and 10 to the right sides of the ship. Repeat for rat lines 11, 12, and 13 on the left side. Um, Cement top of each rat line to the mast, just under the cross tree. And we've got figure three. You can see the flags are going on. And we've got the sails. Look at the transom decoration. That's pretty cool. See angles of sails, details and cement the pins in staysail into the holes on the mizzen masts. 
Cement the main sails and the fore sails to the main and fore mast in that order. Cement the small sails 17 and 18 over the end of the boom. Then cement the boom to the bow of the ship. You can see right there. Cut out moisten gum back of transom decoration and applied to the stern of the ship. And again, it's that. You can see on the bottom, we've got the angle of the sails and the details. I'll show you the way the wind is blowing and obviously the sails all have to be going the same way and we've got figure four which is the rigging using the using a thread provided follow the, the draw in drawings uh, excuse me use thread provided and follow drawings of the illustration in figure four Tie one end to the top of the jib sail and secure each mast in turn. Then carry in making a series of round turns on the ends of yards and gaffs around the rigging, the masts, hull, and sails. Do not pull the masts out of position, but take plenty of time. A drop of cement over the knots and turns will make your ship stronger. You can see it right there. And the flags. Cut out the flags, moisten, gum back, and wrap around the mast or rigging, as shown in drawings of the photo. Before it dries, kink the flags to for greater realism. Cement the completed model inside of the bottom half, then using the cement sparingly, place remaining bottle half in place, and you can add the cork for realism. And then it shows you a beautiful finished model. Look at that. That looks really nice, and don't yeah, it's very tiny <laughs> when you guys see it. So the ship looks huge in the picture. But when we actually show you the model pieces, it's not as big. So let's put the instruction sheet over here. All right, let's start by looking at what's in this bag. I don't know if this is the original bag or not. But let's get everything out, put that to the side. First thing I notice is the rat lines. They look like they're like printed onto a clear plastic sheet. And that's a pretty good idea. And let's see, which ones do we have? We got the left side. And we've got another one of these. But it looks like it's for the smaller ones. So that's a good idea, putting it on a clear plastic. And it looks like we're gonna move on to the, uh, the decorations. You can see that kind of glue on the back. And look at the transom. That's pretty nice. And we've got the flags cut out for your finished model. What is this? It looks like we have the um, the bottom of the ocean, the surface of the water to put in the bottom of the bottle. And this will detail up really nice. We can make it look like the sea. And let's go right to the, the ship itself, the hull. And again, it may look gigantic on camera, but it's very, really not big. Matter of fact, let me show you guys the size of this model. Um, let's see, looks to be about three inches. And the surface of the water or the base is about, uh, let's call it six inches. So I'm not sure what scale this is in because it doesn't really say it. But let me show you guys the the other side of the half of the mat of the uh, hull. By the way, this is the uh, port side. You can see the cannon sticking out. So when you put the halves together, interestingly, it's got a clear bottom or a, an open bottom. I'm not really sure why. But you can see the bottom of the ship has that opening. 
and it's gonna go like this. You can see the light in the back. Now, I've been to the Mayflower too, and well, several times, but the most recent time we've been to the Mayflower, um, I never really noticed a light back there. So this could be because it's from the Mayflower, the original Mayflower, I'm not sure. But you can see it's gonna go on to the base just like that. All right, I look now at the, uh, the mast, uh, I'm sorry, the deck, the main deck. And let's see if we can get that on. Let's leave it like that for now. It doesn't want to snap into place and I don't want to jam it. So you guys can see the ship. And you can see the main mast. And that is going to go just like... Again, I don't want to jam it in because it really hasn't been assembled yet. So the model is in pretty good shape. I got to get a year on this. And the foremast is going to go like that. And the aft. So, so far. And let's see, the mizzen mast. Let's see if we can get this to stay in without, without the glue. see there's a little hole in there and there's a little slot on the mast and where it's going to go facing down. I don't know if the camera is going to pick that up. But when that's glued that'll stay a lot better. And like I was saying guys, the, um, the majority of work from this model is actually going to be the, uh, the detailing. And unfortunately, it looks like someone already started this kit but they actually did a pretty good job on the sails. Really nice job, actually. You can see the, um, it looks like it's broken on top. But this is the only exception to the kit. The rest is all in um, new condition. And let's show you guys the sails. Let's check out the main sails first. Get some nice detail, and that'll go on just like that. And then we've got the uh, forward sails, and this is the one that goes in the back. And let's see, this one goes, let's see, where would this one go into the front? And we got that one. So we got a, t a total of, let's see, pieces of the sails. One, two, three, four, five. We got six pieces. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's take a look. <clears throat> Make sure that we have all the sails. All right. So we got the two that go on the boom. And then we got the four sails. We got the main sails. We got the stay sail. So there's a total of one, two, three, four, five. Five pieces of sail. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of sail. Okay, we have an extra piece. I'm wondering I'm actually wondering if this is an extra piece from another model kit. Could be, because the rest of the sails seem to be what we need. We don't need this one. So maybe this one got into the kit by accident. Let's face it so you guys can see the finished model. And then, lastly, we've got the rigging. And I love it when they, when they include the rigging. 
and it's clear, well, not clear, it's like a tan color. But you might want to run a marker over it. At least that's what I'll do. Run a permanent marker over it and darken it up a little bit. Or you can paint it when it's on the ship. But it might be easier to do that before we put it on. And you can see the rigging. And that is everything in the kit. Again, the kit itself is three inches. I want to be careful with this because it's not being held together with glue. And I want to show you guys, I'll give you guys an idea of what the finished ship will look like. Again, we can detail this up nicely. And the biggest part of this model, or the most challenging part, is actually going to be getting it um, to look the best with the detail. So, let's see, what else is in the box? We've got the bottle. Move the sails aside, and looks like first thing I notice is we've got the cork. Well, it smells like dust and age. It doesn't smell like cork anymore. And what is this? I'm thinking that, oh, nice. I thought this might be the background. America's Maritime History in Miniature. Shipyard ships in a bottle. And standard quick construction kit. Beautifully scaled models of famous ships that made America's growing history of the sea. Glowing history of the sea, excuse me. Ships that anyone can build, ships that all will admire. And this is from 1620, and this is the Mayflower. And it's showing the instructions. So this could be the instruction sheet. Um, I don't know if this is in addition to the ones we looked at, but we've got the shipyard ships in a bottle. And you can see the two halves of the hull going together. And you can see the deck in there as well. And then following the full color illustration of the front of the instruction sheet, carefully paint the hull, deck, fittings, and mass in the yards. When point is dry, put model aircraft or polystyrene cement on the sides of the deck. Locate between two sides of the hull and cement. Cement the deck into it in between two sides of the hull and cement into place. Dip the ends of the mast in bowsprit and cement and push into the locations on the deck. See illustration. Carefully cut the rat lines from the piece and acetate and cement the most below sail locators and slides, uh, excuse me, sides of the hull. Locate all the sails in position and cement at an angle in the ship's direction. See illustration. Cut out the flags and pennants and instruction sheet. Put cement on unpainted sides and wrap around the mast tops. Kinking properly before the cement dries. The flags should be right at the angles of the yards. Cut out the transom decoration and cement in position on the stern. Paint the ocean blue with patches of white around the hull and crest of waves. Then dry brush green patches to obtain a more realistic effect. Put cement on the underside of the hull and recess in the ocean allow to dry. When all the paint and cement are permanently dry, you can start rigging your model. For best results, use fine brown thread and a needle. Tie the end um, of the thread to the end of the bowsprit and secure each mast in turn to proper position. Then carry on by making a series of round turns to the ends of the yards, around the mast, slits, sails, etc. Taking care not to put any of the masts out of position, Follow the fully rigged instructions on this page and drop a cement over the knots and turn will make your model stronger. Put the cement on the underside of the ocean and place the bottle carefully, applying a little cement to both edges. And unfortunately, step 12 is ripped. So there was a piece that went on here and that's no longer with the model. You can see putting it in the model. You can see the, um, yeah, that's unfortunate that it's ripped. You can see the ship in the bottle, the table lamps, bookends, and 
desk says. So I like this. This is what I was looking for, actually. On September 6th, a crisp, cold morning in the year, in the year 1620, a ship sailed from Plymouth, England. A gallant Mayflower with 102 brave souls on board had set out on what they were surely the most eventful voyage in American history. By the way, I have a book um, that I'm going to be reading you guys specifically on the Mayflower and the crossing. The Mayflower, a comparatively small ship of about 200 tons, was at the time her journey a new world, at least 33 years old. Although a merchant ship, she had participated in a defense against the Spanish Armada in 1588, for which action awards were made to her owners. On the of the actual voyage, we have a narrative by William Bradford, a member of the par a member of the party, which tells of the temperous weather encountered in buckling one of the ship's great beams that was prepared temporarily by using a large iron screw and placing the supporting post under the beam. Let's see. This ship this this held until the ship reached Provincetown, Mass, on November 11th, 67 days after leaving England. In that harbor, 41 of those on board signed a famous Mayflower Compact a land on landing. And the fathers had a meeting to decide their future action, and it was agreed that a small group should explore the nearby coastline. On December 11th, this group landed on what was to become Plymouth, Massachusetts, founding the first settlement in America. That the Mayflower was weakened by that long voyage, there was no doubt. And coupled with her long service on the seas, the journal, uh, the journey virtually finished her off as a seagoing vessel. In the records in a high court of admiralty, admiralty London, we find that 1624, three years after her return to England, she was stated to be in ruins. Upon valuation, the ruins were appraised at 128.8 pounds, I think that is, approximately $384. And unfortunately, I don't see a, a date on these instructions. Obviously, it's not 1620, but that was in the, um, that was in the bottle. So, I'll have to do some research and see which came first when the kit was first um, released. I'm thinking that that's probably why there's an extra set of instructions and there's an extra sale from another model. Okay, you can see this half of the, the bottle and the other half and I'm going to show you guys how they're going to go together. some gaps on this side but for the most part that's how the bottle is going to go and you can see the cork is going to go in just like that I don't think I'm going to be able to get the ship to sit into the bottle without <clears throat> having it come apart I'm going to try but more than likely it's just going to crumble apart because it's not glued. See, if we do this, well, maybe. This is going to go. It's going to go like that. So that's pretty cool. I wish I had a background. What we can do is we can make a background for it. the printer and we can make a background but my friends if you were curious about this model kit 
on the Mayflower on this the Thanksgiving season. I hope this uh, satisfied your curiosity. And like I said, we were going to make this for our Thanksgiving build. But I got a surprise for you. I got something that's going to be a lot more fun and from more, a more authentic place. So my friends, I thank you so much for watching. And until my next video, I'll talk to you soon and have a great fall.